Let's see here. All right, part two of cover page tutorial. Okay, here we go. The uh, where we last left off was we opened up this cover sheet, and uh, now I'm going to insert some images. Right, I'm coming over here to image, and I'm finding that folder where I saved all those. So I have my uh, Google Maps image here. I've got my site plan image there, and my rendered image. Okay, so I'll start with the site plan image. Go ahead and click. It should open up something like that. And I'll just place that in there. I'll do the same thing for my other images. So I'm going to insert image, find the folder. In my case, it's already here. I'll find my Google Maps image as well. So that's going in there. And then finally, there was the uh, rendered image. So I'm going to come over here, insert image, and we're doing the rendered image. Hit open. Okay, so I'll start with those and that's give, give me a good starting point and feel free you can um, change the size of these images just by clicking and dragging. Make it look nice and neat and pretty. Okay, so um, yeah, feel free to do change things up around a little bit like that. Okay, next up, I'm going to add some text so I can keep track of my sheet index, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so um, for this example, um, I'll add some a title block first. So I'm going to come over here to insert. <coughs> uh, actually, sorry, it should be under annotate text. Okay, and right now when I default the text, it should be a quarter inch. Ariel, if you want to uh, make your own text size, you can also change it up. Uh, I'll show you that in a second, actually. Okay, so for now, I'm going to just start typing in. Uh, the first one, uh, I'll just type in the title, so Affordable Housing Design Project. Okay, and I'll go ahead and, oops, let me get out of the text editor first. Click on it, you should be able to drag it around a little, put it onto your sheet. Okay, a uh, common question I get here is if I want to change the actual text size, uh, what you need to do is you'll come over here. Uh, right now, that's uh, your only defaults, so I'm going to create a new type. Right? So if I come over here to text, click on edit type. Okay, right now the default is quarter inch Arial. Okay, so what I'll need to do is I'm going to duplicate this. It's a still a uh, system family text. And for example, I might change this to a one inch Arial. Okay, so I'm going to have a nice big um, text there. I'll change over on this side. I'm going to change the text size to one inch. And tab size of half is fine. Okay, so I'll hit OK and it will automatically change my text size. So one inch is pretty large, but um, you get the idea. You can change it to whatever you want. Okay, um, let's see here. Uh, and then also I need to add some text to um, label these different pictures, um, site plan, location photo, things like that. Right. And I shall go ahead and show you guys how to do that really quick as well. Under annotate again, I'm going to go to text. <clears throat> right now it's defaulting to that quarter inch. That's fine. I'll leave it at that. And we'll keep track of all of our sheets that we'll be creating. So in total, I'm going to have five sheets. Here's my sheet index. A101 is going to be the cover page. A102 is my elevations. A103 is my floor plan. A104 will be my cross sections. And then A105 is my schedules. Okay. All right. So again, if you want, you can play around with some different text sizes if you want to. Uh, here I will again, go to edit type. Uh, let's duplicate this one. We'll make this one a half inch aerial. 
go OK. Change it down here. Text size will be one half. And hit OK again. Okay, should update my text so it's now a half inch in height. Okay, like I said, feel free to add some text down here to explain what these different um, images are. All right, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm going to keep moving. Okay, so I have my schedules page. Uh, remember, my schedule is going to be A105 now, so uh, hopefully you have this one created. All I would be doing when I open up my schedules is changing the, the number down here. So instead of A102, this would be A105. Okay. All right, let's set up one more sheet here. I think the other ones are, um, you should have already kind of created. The dimension floor plan should be created. Uh, some of the section views should be available for you. Uh, the last thing might be the elevations. Okay, so we've done something similar to this, but I'll show you one more time anyways. Okay, go under new sheet. Uh, again, find the D size sheet. And once it loads up, it's right now defaulting to A106, which is the next page. I'm going to call this A102. And this is going to be my elevation views. Okay. Uh, once I'm here, all I'm doing is I'm going to take a look first at my elevation views. So for example, my east view, let's see what it looks like right now. Okay, so it looks pretty good. I've got most of my uh, footings and things like that. I've got looks like there's an extra. Oh, I did have the driveway shown here, so I'm going to go ahead and hide that. You can right click anytime. You can right click on it, hide in view, hide an element. Uh, similarly, I might hide some of my section views um, in my elevation views as they are not really giving me too much information that I would need. Okay, so again, you're just clicking on them, right click on it and then go hide and view. Okay, so there's my east elevation, looks pretty good, which I might go ahead and hide this. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so come over to my sheet, elevation view sheet, and uh, now all I need to do is click and drag my elevation view. and place it in there. Okay, so I've got my east view it's showing the heights of my top plate which is kind of where the roof ends, uh, the floor, the top of the foundation, top of the footing. Okay, the last thing I'll show you again, you'll probably you'll do the same thing for your north, south, and west views. Uh, the last thing I'll kind of show you is if you want to change the size of things, uh, what you want to do is come back over here to your whatever view you're looking at and then you can change the scale right down here. Okay, So right now it's set to an eighth of an inch equals a foot. Uh, if I want to make it larger for example I might change it to a quarter inch to a foot and if I go back to my sheet now oops, clicked on the wrong one, on my elevation views okay you can see that it came out bigger I'll change the location and again you just want to make sure things are coming out nice and neat so you might want to um, change the size of the lines so that they match things properly so on and so forth okay that should get you going on all the sheets uh, again you'll add the rest of the views here you should have a floor plan view already let me show you again the final example uh, by the end of it will look kinda like this Oops, there it is. Uh, and you're going to save it as a PDF. So that will be the final step I'll show you guys. You have your elevation views. That's what you're pulling in. You got your dimension views, your section views getting pulled in. Okay, so to print this to PDF, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is come over here to File. Uh, most people want to come here under export, but you'll see here under export there actually is not an option for uh, PDF. So instead, you're actually going to print it. Okay, so when you go to print, 
there should be an option that says uh, save to PDF or Qt PDF writer. Either one uh, should work. Okay, here it comes. Uh, so I'm going to load it up down here. You might need to scroll down and find uh, Qt PDF writer. It's the one I have. Okay, so Qt PDF writer. Uh, most of you guys should have that built in. Uh, you'll see a few of the options. It says combine multiple selected sheets into a single file. That's what you want. Uh, you can show where it's going to end up. In my case, it's going to go to the same folder that I have my um, uh, my current Revit file saved in. Okay, you can do uh, current view, current window. Uh, you can also do print range. So I'm going to do print range selected views sheets. Okay, I still want this to combine multiple sheets. I'm not sure why it changed there. But the, the, the ones I want to select are all my sheets. Right? So I come down, I find sheet A101, A102, 105, and hit OK. For future use in Revit session, uh, sure, hit yes. Okay, and then you'll name it. In this case, uh, set one is fine. OK. And finally, we should be good there. I'll hit OK. And once it prints to PDF, uh, oftentimes it'll give you in ex the final product will show up here. Uh, if not, you might have to go find it in that folder. Um, so mine was saved here under CEA. This was under core training. Let's see if it saved it here. Uh, Revit practice. Um, all right, maybe this is not where I saved it. Hold on. Okay, sorry. So it took a second here to load up. Um, here is where I'm going to save it to. Uh, right now, I'm going to just double check where I am in my folder. So I'm under desktop CEA under images right now. Okay, so it's going to be called Affordable Housing Core Training. That's fine. Uh, actually, let me rename that Affordable Housing Example Sheet. Okay, hit save. And now if I go to that folder, uh, it was under images. Affordable housing example sheet. That's what I had just saved. Now if I open up this PDF, these are the sheets that we had just created. Okay. All right, so here's the sheets. Uh, that's the cover page I made. That's the elevation views page that I have not finished yet, but that's what I made. And then finally, it was the um, schedules that I had created earlier. All right, that should be good to go. Once you have that set, you'll submit that on Schoology and um, be wrapped up for the housing project.